Good evening. Welcome to the news of March. I'm Ian Uwe. And tonight, Martin Bryant and his chilling 72 confessions of not guilty. Hope for the uncoordinated children and Xavier's touching report on a truly superwoman. And in sport today, Lyndon Smith gives up the water. But first, we cross now to Michael Robbins reporting from Port Arthur, the scene of that terrible tragedy that happened only months ago. Michael. Thank you, Ben. Martin Bryant, accused of the notorious Port Arthur incident. 72 people committed guilt. Martin Bryant, <laughs> accused of the notorious Port Arthur incident, pleaded not guilty to an unprecedented 72 counts of murder and intent to kill. At one point of time during, during the court, brother of one of the deceased screamed to Bryant, your time will come, your time will come too Bryant. Bryant however was straight faced and appeared to be unaffected, but some observers say he had a smirk on his face. Anyway, this trauma, drama, continues. And tonight, I'll leave you on a sad note. Thank you. Hope today for those young children less coordinated than ours. This just in. Large group of students from Kingland High School marched today for the local council chambers in protest against planned closure of Apping Park. The council plans to sell the parklands to a major developer. Another march is planned for next week at which many of the students and parents and teachers will follow their lead. Back to our regular story. Hope today for those young children less coordinated than others. Researchers at La Trobe University have broken new ground in overcoming this terrible disorder. A breakthrough of treatment may soon put an end to the playground taunts of spaz, anko and nuff-nuff, which have been the plague in Australian playgrounds for years. Professor Helene Christophelofni of the Joint University has spent 15 years and studied 17 children since 1980 in order to do something or another for social alienation that plagues children with motor skills problems. An estimated 5-7% to 7 of Australian children are affected with uncoordination and their treatment is based on a combination of problem solving and verbal self-guidance. The success rate of this, the success rate of this Thing has been encouraging, giving hope to many Australians that one day we'll rid this country of embarrassingly uncoordinated nerds. Thank you, back to you. Thank you, and now and on a lighter note, back to Xavier with a touching story of amazing courage. <laughs> Xavier. When one thinks fondly of Hollywood greats, they think of Cary Grant, Uma Thurman, and John Malkovich, but not Margot Kidder. Nevertheless, she can be thanked for providing us with the uh, memorable portrayal of Lois Lane in the Superman movies. But, but, the portrayal of Lois Lane may be her best remembered role, but not necessarily her best, as she did a telly movie in 1987 with Corey Haim. Yet who would have known that only a few years later this woman would, would succumb to her own personal kryptonite? Uh, medic depression brought on by drugs and alcohol. This resulted in the police finding her naked and depressed, naked and disorientated in her own backyard. What led to this great social downfall? Some would say, again, the force of the fall. <laughs> the something of fortune did not favour Kidder. However, a more accurate evaluation would be her reliance on drugs and alcohol to knock a lack of plight. Either way, Margaret Kidder is one of the super women who will be on our hearts for a while. Thank you very much. Thank you, Xavier. For a tear in my eye. And now we cross to Silesius Crum with today's sport report. Hi, in Dover, Australian long distance swimmer Lyndon Stevens, known affectionately to admirers as the trout, has abandoned <laughs> his uh, swim across the <laughs> English Journal. <laughs> Due to high winds, um, a disappointment <laughs> of his supporters. I'll be back out there the minute conditions <laughs> When asked about his reported thrive problem, he replied, I'll break the channel record even if I have to use crutches. 
What a kidder. <laughs> Truly an amazing story there, and I look forward to Essendon's win on the weekend. And now it's over to John McCluskey with this weekend's weather report. John! <laughs> <laughs> the weather tomorrow is real good in Melbourne. <laughs> in Melbourne, it's going to be fine with it. John's going to fly. and Benny go and see Seymour, Orbis and Latrobe Valley will all be 24. The base expect a north to south westerly 19 to 47 knots, freshening to 17 to 32 knots during the morning. Waves rising to 6 metres. The total sunshine for October has been 39.6 hours and the total rainfall has been 38 millimetres. Tomorrow, Jupiter is rising at 10.29am and 14am. People in Frankfurt tomorrow expect a top of 13 and cloudy. In Kuala Lumpur, it will be 32 degrees and rain. Tel Aviv will be 27 and clear. And those fortunate enough to be in Islamabad can look forward to a lovely 28 degrees. <laughs> this picture was sent in from Charlie. Thanks. Thank you. We definitely got a new artist there in Charlie, I can tell you. Well, after the enormous success of their first event earlier this year, the Visual Octopus will go on the fringe as the closing of the Melbourne Fringe Festival. The event promises to be an evening of anything goes and usually does. Well, I truly cannot wait for that one. Well, that's all the news on the march for this day, the 14th of October. Be sure to be watching next tomorrow night. For now, it's good night. May the force be with you.